We're looking at Revelation 13 today, and Revelation 13 teaches us about the rise of the Antichrist. This is actually going back again, so we're not uh, chronological anymore. Again, we're in a break here, and it's explaining to us how the Antichrist came to power. Chapter 12 had uh, explained to us the, the fight between the, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And chapter 13 explains furthermore how, what this Antichrist will be like. Antichrist means in the place of. And so just as Satan has tried to take the place of God and is trying to replace him, he is trying to take the place of Jesus right now. And he, he is uh, trying to set himself up in the place of Jesus, in the place of the Christ. So he is going to come and act like he is the Christ. Uh, there's going to be three main characters. The dragon, Satan himself, is the one who gives his powers to two beasts, which are human being, beings here on earth. Uh, the dragon himself, is going to, he's acting like God. He thinks he is God. He's trying to set himself up as God. The first beast we're going to see is kind of like Jesus. There's an attempt on the life of this first beast, and he uh, fakes raising from the dead, and everybody's going to be amazed at that. And then there's going to be a second beast. Uh, this second beast comes as a prophet for the first beast, and he's also given power by Satan, and he performs miracles, but he is a prophet for the first beast, and he sets up an image of the first beast, which everyone has to worship. So we see these three uh, three characters in chapter 13, the dragon, the first beast, and the second beast. When we talk about the Antichrist, we will not be able to avoid talking about Judas Iscariot. There are only two people that have been called the son of perdition in the Bible. Judas is one of them, and this character, the Antichrist, is the second. Judas is key to understanding uh, what the Antichrist will be like. Uh, Luke 22.3 says, Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. Uh, Judas Iscariot and the Antichrist later on are the only people that are said to be Satan-possessed. So Satan will actually give his abilities to these two people, and Judas was one of them. These are the only two people that are called the son of perdition. John 17, 12. I, I'm using the King James Version here because it's using that term specifically. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in, in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So here Jesus is praying to his father. And he is saying that none of those who God had given him would be lost except for the son of perdition, which was Judas Iscariot. And then let's read Second Thessalonians 2, uh, verse 3, and in the King James Version. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So here he's saying that the day of the Lord, the, the last day, the second coming, will not come until the Antichrist is revealed, until the son of perdition is revealed. So these are the two characters that are called the son of perdition. These are the only two characters that are said to be Satan-possessed. If we uh, quickly look at the, the character of Judas Iscariot, we can understand a lot about this character uh, of the Antichrist who will come in the future. We notice that uh, Judas Iscariot was a lover of money. He loved money. He acted as if he cared for the poor. He was part of the chosen 12, so he was in the inner circle. And his attitude rubbed off on others. And this will quickly point this out by looking at the story where Jesus is anointed in Bethany. We'll look at it through John, Mark, and Matthew. Uh, John 12, 1 to 6. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. 
As keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Look at uh, the same account in Mark 14.4. Some of those present were saying it indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? This attitude of acting like you care for the poor, but actually you're just thinking of yourself comes from Judas. But in Mark 14, it says that some were saying, so it's not. It's more than one person that was saying it. And in Matthew 26, 8, it says, when the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. So this is all the disciples all of a sudden. So so this Judas, his underlying attitude kind of uh, was was felt among all the disciples. Let's read 1 John 2, 18 to 19. Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed the, that none of them belonged to us. So we know that the Antichrist is going to be very much like Judas. And Judas came out from among them. Uh, this is what the Antichrist is going to do. He's going to come out and from a, among the Jewish people uh, specifically. Chapter 13, it starts out by talking about the kingdom of the Antichrist. And it starts out like this in Revelation 13.1. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns, seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. We've already seen a little bit about these ten horns and seven heads and seven and ten crowns uh, in the previous chapter, so we won't uh, look into that more. Um, I think what's more important than knowing exactly what governments this is talking about, uh, we should notice what these governments look like. Um, because each of these heads have been given blasphemous names. Satan is associated with all governments. Uh, he, he has his hand in any government across this world, but there are certain governments that he will use more in the future and that he has used more in the past. What I want to notice here is what these governments look like. They have blasphemous names, every one of them. So any kingdom associated with Satan will be blasphemous. The worst form of blasphemy is calling yourself God. Speaking against God is blasphemy. To treat God's commands with contempt that is also blasphemy. To despise and scorn the word of God, that's blasphemy. And pride is blasphemy. So all these things will describe the governments that Satan um, works through. In some way, they will call themselves gods. They will speak out against God. They will treat God's commands with contempt. They will despise and scorn the word of God. And they will be very proud. This word blasphemy comes out often when we talk about the Antichrist. Even in this chapter, Revelation 13, let's look at Revelation 13, 5. The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasph blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. Revelation 13, 6. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and slandered his name and his dwelling place and those who lived in heaven. Revelation 13, 11, Then I saw the second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. Daniel 7, 8, While I was thinking about the horns, there before me was another horn, a little one, which came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully. So this boasting is prevalent in the kingdoms of Satan. Uh, Daniel 11.36 The king will do as he pleases. He will exalt and magnify himself above every god and will say unheard of things against the god of gods. He will be successful until the time of wrath is completed. For what has been determined must take place. Not only will governments become more and more prideful and boastful and blasphemous, but the people in general in the world are going to become more and more that way. Uh, as it is written in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God 
having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. You see this having a form of godliness but denying its power? Somehow, in the end, these governments and the people of the world are going to act godly. They, they think they're above everyone and that, they, that they're really nice. But in fact, they are brutal and disobedient and boastful and lovers of themselves. And just quickly, for interest's sake here, um, let's look at a few kingdoms of the past. If you look at the, the pharaohs in Egypt, they were considered to be the god Horus, so they were deified. The Assyrian kings were also considered to be priests of the god Asher. Sennacherib uh, called himself the king of the universe in, in one of the writings that was found. And we can see the arrogance of the kings of Assyria uh, when we read 2 Kings 19, 11-13. Surely you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries, destroying them completely. And will you be delivered? Did the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my pre predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozan, Aran, Rezeph, and the people of Eden who were t in Tel Asar? Where is the king of Hamath of, or the king of Arpad? Where are the kings of Lair? So this is the king of uh, Assyria here boasting, saying, your, your God will not help you. We will come and destroy you. So look at the, the boastfulness of these, these uh, dynasties. The Babylonians were also uh, in the same way. They were very prideful. We can read about uh, the, the fall of Nebuchadnezzar because of the pride he had in Daniel 4, 28-30. Uh, all this happened to the king Nebuchadnezzar 12 months later as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. He said, Is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty? So look, look of these boastful words that come out of their, their mouths. Uh, the, the Persian kings were, were no exception to the rule. Uh, the Persian king Darius was being prayed to above all other gods in Daniel 6, 7, 8. They, they made this decree. They're trying to trap Daniel. But he agreed with this. Uh, a prideful and boastful attitude uh, was common among the kings of Persia and Assyria, Babylonians. The Greeks also considered their leaders to be sons of Ammon Zeus. A lot of the Greeks were also prideful and they were considered to be deified by the people. Uh, the Romans, uh, of course, Julius Caesar, he was, he was called a god. We can read of that in the Bible in Acts 12, 21 to 23, when Herod gets up and everybody uh, cries out, this is not the voice of man, it's the voice of God. He does not give praise to God and he dies right there on the spot. Any government that Satan has to do with will be prideful, boastful, will somehow consider themselves to be above anybody else. And of course, Jesus warned us that this would happen in Matthew 24. And we'll look at uh, verse 5 and 9. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. Uh, there will be many antichrists uh, throughout the ages, until the end where the, the main antichrist will show up. But this, this spirit of claiming to be God and of claiming to be Jesus will be present. And verse 9 then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. This hatred towards the true Christians will be prominent in the end times. And again, this Antichrist, although he acts holy and religious and sets himself up to be a, a very good person, he is against truth. Just like Judas Iscariot acted like he was good, he was there with the disciples, but he was against Jesus and he was only there for himself. Now we get a little more detail about the kingdom of, of the Antichrist. Revelation 13, 2. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear and mouth like that of a lion. Because of this description in uh, verse 2 here, we can tie in uh, this beast with the beasts that Daniel saw in Daniel 7. We can also tie in the empires of Babylon, Persia, and Greece into uh, into into empires that Satan has used. This beast resembled a leopard. It had feet like a bear, and it had a mouth like a lion. This uh, can be seen in the beasts that Daniel see, Daniel sees in uh, chapter seven, verse two to seven. He sees four great beasts um, in, in this chapter, and the first one is like a lion, and the second one is like a bear. The third one is like a leopard, 
And the fourth one is unlike anything he's ever seen, and it's terrifying. So the, the fourth one is the, the actual last kingdom of the Antichrist. It's described to us here in chapter 13. The, the lion was Babylon, the, king, the, the empire of Babylon, the, the bear was the empire of Persia, the leopard was the empire of Greece. And then came Rome, which uh, kind of split into two, and, and uh, some would say has not completely disappeared. Revelation 13.2, the beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like a lion. And the dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. All these governments, to some extent, were given authority by Satan himself. And the very last government that, will, that Satan will control will be given authority by Satan.